So I think one of the first most important things to understand about the Israeli cybersecurity community and industry is that yes, we start very young, not just in our 20s, but in our teens. I was a hacker when I was 13. When I was 18, it was my time to join the Israeli army. And the Israeli army is like a melting pot. Everybody serves, or mostly everybody serves, women and men. So we also have a more diverse ecosystem of talent. Now, the military service, because it is mandatory, the army has gotten really good at training that talent and then going through you know two months or two th three months or maybe it's a couple of months or even a year and then churning through and going to the next generation of talent so it's an evergreen ecosystem every two years you have fresh people that are coming out into the industry after having proved their chops in the cybersecurity world working for the military so that's that's kind of like a rocket fuel for our industry you know that's a really good point because the number one complaint that is in the US by the way they're desperate to hire talent Number one complaint is there's no pipeline, there's no talent. I'm desperately looking for talent. But literally, you are. there is a, a constant pipeline of talent coming out of here. It's not just that there is a pipeline of talent, it's also that the Army got really good at identifying the specific skill sets and talents and capabilities of the people that are being drafted so that they can pipe them in the right place within the system and really get the most out of them. When you have limited resources, as a country, we don't have a lot of resources. We don't have natural resources, we don't have a lot of land, we don't have a lot of people, we will always be outweighed by our adversaries if you just look at the numbers. So we have to outsmart our adversaries with our brain power, with our intellectual capacity, and we have to be that much smarter at using that talent, bringing people into the army, getting the most out of them through their military service, and then releasing them to the ecosystem so that they can start companies, they can become academic professors, and they can really continue the spirit of innovation. I want to know your personal story. First of all, what did you do in the Army? So I didn't serve in the famous 8200. I actually served in another unit called the Operational Security Department of the Intelligence Branch. And this was actually almost 20 years ago, believe it or not. I know I may not look it, but it was more than 20 years ago. And on the first day when I got you know, you go to boot camp, they literally give you the boots, they give you your shots, they take your photo, and then they put you in a small room, there's an officer, goes through all your files, goes through all the papers, all of the aptitude tests and the screening that you've already gone through. And he looks at all the data and then he looks at me and he says, well, Karen, what's your story? What do you want to do? And I looked up at him and I said, I want to be a hacker. And I want to be a hacker for the military. Thankfully, 20 years ago, the Israeli military had a person in place that could say, okay, that's cool. We are going to use that mindset. We're going to use that capability and we're going to send you to the right place so that you can actually work on defending the Israeli information systems, the military information systems for potential eavesdropping or intelligence gathering. So that was my focus point, defense. So were you, were you 18 at that time? I was 18. So at, at age 18, you come in, I want to be a hacker. They're like, all right, we got that set up. We can do that. What are the, like, the first things that you're learning at that page, at 18? So uh, I'll be honest with you, around that time, I probably knew more than some of my instructors because- Because uh, you've been starting at age yes, 13, I understand. I already had a couple of years uh, of, you know, uh, of runway before I joined the army. However, one of the things I had to learn about was really to understand how a military operates in terms of communications, how military forces use radio communications, all kinds of electromagnetic spectrum radiation for communications purposes. It's not like you know the army operated on the internet, at least it did not back then. So it was really understanding what are the communication spectrums that are relevant for the military. And then for me, it was coming up with ideas on how can we find security problems. And in fact, I had to continuously prove to the Army that not only I knew what I was doing, but also that I could innovate, that I could come up with my own projects. I would be given a lot of leeway, and my commanding officers would say, OK, well, we, we're going to give you a couple months. You're going to spend them in this base looking at these infrastructure systems and we'll see what you come up with. What kind of security findings can you show us so that we know if we need to invest more in this area of our infrastructure. So there was also a lot of freedom. It wasn't just structured learning, which was the base of it, but also a lot of freedom. And I think this is a really important part of the way the Israeli military promotes innovation, particularly in cybersecurity. There are some constraints, resource constraints, but there's also a lot of freedom to explore and to innovate. All right, so you spend how many years do you spend in the army? Three or more? Three. Three years. Okay. Okay. So you spend three years. Think about where you were at the beginning and where you're at the end, and what did you feel that you were capable of doing at the end of that three years that you didn't think you could do when you walked in? 
Well, first of all, at the end of the three years, I knew I had a career. If I wanted it or not, I had started getting calls before I was even done. Before I gave my uniform back, I would get calls from companies in Israel. They said, we heard you're almost done with your service. We want to interview you. We want to hire you, regardless of whether I had an academic degree, which I didn't. So I already understood that the need for information security professionals was so critical in the industry that people that were fresh out of military service would actually be able to do fantastically well. I also gained a much broader understanding of the technological ecosystem because, you know, when I was a hacker before the Army, I knew maybe a little bit about, uh, you know, TCP IP, I knew about web hacking, I knew about HTML, I knew about PHP. I didn't really know a lot about the other types of systems and technologies that are being used in the larger organizations, whether it's mainframe or radio communications or all, all kinds of different types of technology architecture. So I learned a lot more about that and it really prepared me. Again, this was 20 years ago, so of course a lot of things have changed. But I think one thing that doesn't change is that the military service really gives people not just a better understanding of a technology ecosystem, but also a moral compass. At least that's what it did for me. I was a hacker, but after the army I realized I am a hacker for good. I'm a hacker for my country. I want to be an information security protector, defender, not a criminal or an attacker. And this is something that you get through that military experience at least that's how I feel and it's very important that we continue having these sorts of experiences in the future for our potential candidates for the security industry. That is an awesome story. I love that. Thank you, Karen. My pleasure. Thank you, David.